Welcome, welcome, welcome to Fearlessly Feral Living. This is Reverend Karen speaking, and I am continuing my podcast series on the four parts of the introduction of the Science of Mind textbook. This particular episode is on the second section titled, The Way It Works. And if you're just tuning in, the first section is already up and you can listen to it. It's called The Thing Itself. And yes, this is all from the Science of Mind textbook in the introduction. And it's the first four sections. And what those first four sections do basically cover the foundations for our entire teaching. I encourage you to get your own copy of the Science of Mind textbook and read each section for yourself and make up your own mind about what it means and how you can apply it in your life. So I'm going to go in and do my introduction here and then get started. So welcome again to Fearlessly Feral Living, broadcasting to you from the Woogie Ranch out here in the back 40 of northwestern Nevada, where I'm a half an hour away from the nearest gas station and the nearest grocery store. Our mission here at Fearlessly Feral Living is to teach practical application of science and mind principles to provide a strong and unshakable inner foundation that facilitates long-term successful living. <clears throat> okay, so as I reread through this amazing section, I was reminded of the absolute power of this teaching. This this review of these four sections is working me from the inside out and it's a wonderful thing. I can't recommend it enough. And I moved to say that if there were only one section to read in the Science of Mind textbook, it would be this one. This second part, this thing called the way it works. In this section, Holmes drives home several different points, several different things. In, I'm sorry, let me back up here. In this section, Holmes drives home in several different ways, two main points. Here's his first point. God can only work as us and through us. And the second point is what we believe is how our lives manifest. Now that first point, God can only work as us and through us. This is where I get my permission to say that God doesn't do things. We do. You may have heard me say that. I'm prone to saying it quite frequently, particularly when I get frustrated at people who say, God's going to do this for me and God's going to do that for me. Oh my God, it frustrates me. God can only work through us and as us. I read that to say God doesn't do things we do. I get my power from that thing called God, that energy force, but I do the things So let me clarify a little bit and back up my statement of how I can say with confidence that God doesn't do things we do. So here's some quotes from the Science of Mind textbook in Ernest Holmes. Quote, this universal life and energy finds an outlet in and through all that is energized and through everything that lives. Unquote. Here's another one. There is one spirit back of all expression and yet another the life which we live is the universal life expressing through us else how could we live our thought and emotion is the use we make consciously or unconsciously of this original creative thing that is the cause of everything Now, I don't know about you, but when I see sentences like these, and believe me, when I say they are scattered throughout the entire Science of Mind textbook, I see that God expresses itself through us. God is pure energy, and we are the action behind the energy. To me, that says God doesn't do things. It simply gives us the power to do things. And this is from a principle or a concept known as oneness. We are one with spirit, universal life, the original creative thing. Now, remember from the previous episode, and I hope you listen to it. If not, go back and listen to it first. From the previous episode, we can call God by many names. <clears throat> In fact, I love calling it energy. It's my most favorite way to refer to it. And by the way, did you know 
that in, her, in an interview with George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, there's a Science of Mind textbook in the background. This is why I love Star Wars so much, you guys. I see and feel the influence of Science of Mind in those Star Wars movies. The Force. That's what God is to me. It's the Force. And here's a quote from Obi-Wan Kenobi. And yeah, I get it. He's a fictional character and the movie is fiction. But listen to this quote. The Force is what gives a Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us and it binds the galaxy together. Now, translate it into everyday language. That means God is what gives me my power. My power. God is an energy field created by all living things surrounding me and penetrating me and joining me with everything and everyone else in this world. And yeah, that's oneness again, guys. Oneness is the principle that allows me to say that God is within me, a part of me, and works through me and as me. And by extension, oneness is all the prin- also the principle that allows me to say that God doesn't do things we do. Now, I'll never forget when I got this concept. It was back in probably 1997-ish or so. I mean, I really got this concept. It was like a sucker punch to my psyche. And it made me stop and sit up and take one of those (gasps) deep, sudden breaths. Because all of a sudden I realized that I had this wonderful power in my life. Which simultaneously also meant that I had responsibility for myself. I was no longer subject to the whims of life and people. I was no longer a victim. I was empowered. And I'm feeling moved to mention that the book I was reading when I when this occurred, I was reading Conversations with God, book one by Neil Donald Walsh. And I was reading that book because I had just had a major catastrophe in my life and I was in a bit of a depression and I was seeking solutions to that. And I was seeking them from the inside out, which is what science of mind teaches us to do. So I picked up this book, and I'm actually going to read you the passage that changed my life forever. Here it is. Now remember, if you've never written, read, read Conversations with God, it's a series of questions that Neil Donald Walsh asks of God, and then he gets these answers. So here's his question. When you say that prayer is a statement of what is so, are you saying that God does nothing? That everything which happens after a prayer is a result of the prayer's action? Here's the answer. If you believe that God is some omnipotent being who hears all prayers, says yes to some and no to others, and maybe but not now to the rest, you are mistaken. By what rule of thumb would God decide? If you believe that God is the creator and decider of all things in your life, you are mistaken. God is the observer, not the creator. God stands ready to assist you in living your life, but not in the way you might expect. It is not God's function to create or uncreate the circumstances or conditions of your life. God created you in the image and likeness of God. You have created the rest through the power God has given you. God created the process of life and life itself as you know it. Yet God gave you free choice to do with life as you will. In this sense, your will for you is God's will for you. You are living your life the way you are living your life, and I have no preference in the matter. Wow. Okay, breathe. I get it. I've got chills just reading that passage again. It means something to me. It resonates with me. It reminds me of who and what I really am of my basic truth. But I get it. For most of you, this might just be the scariest thing about this thing we call new thought. The idea that God doesn't do things for us and that God doesn't care, that it is simply energy for us to use. And the more we believe in it, the better we can use it. Well, that idea, I get it. Not only very foreign to most people, but also quite scary. And all I have to say with that is, 
I beg you to move through your fear. I beg you to re- reassess your idea of God and maybe consider this concept that I'm presenting to you. Back then, I was ready for it. You know, they say that pa- with power comes responsibility. And all I can say is back then, I was ready to take responsibility for my life. And so I ask you the same thing. Are you Are you ready right here and right now to take responsibility for your life? Are you ready to move through the fear of changing your thinking about this role of God in your life? Are you ready to go within to that scary neighborhood of your mind and get to know yourself and God better so that you can live better? That's what this thing is all about. And that is what Holmes stresses in this section. Yes, we are one with God. It's and it with us, but only as much as we believe. The more we believe, the more power we have. And yet sometimes we misuse that power. We misuse it by ignoring it, by denying it. We misuse it by not taking responsibility for our lives. When that happens, we become victims mostly of our own thinking and the actions that result from that thinking. Here's another quote from Ernest Holmes, one of my favorites. In our ignorance of the truth, we have misused the highest power we possess. And so great is this power. So complete is our freedom in it. So absolute the domain of law through it, that the misuse of this power has brought upon us the very conditions from which we suffer. This is why I say that it is usually necessary to get to the level of belief if we want to take care of some type of limitation in our lives. We need to expose that belief to the light of day and change it. And yes, it is entirely possible to change your beliefs, guys. Holmes goes on to say, and so we suffer, not because suffering is imposed upon us, but because we are ignorant of our true nature. What he's saying here is God didn't do this. It happened because we're ignorant of our true nature. This means we can no longer whine and ask, why are they doing this to me? Why is God doing this to me? Well, those kinds of questions, oh my God, no, we can't ask that anymore. We get to take responsibility. But here's the cool thing about responsibility. Responsibility and power are intertwined. They are engaged in this symbiotic relationship where each feeds off of and into the other. And that power comes from oneness, from knowing ourselves, from allowing that thing to work through us, and from listening to the messages we receive. That still small voice within us, that intuitive feeling, that gut level feeling, that thing that you just know, even if you don't know how you know, that comes from being one with God. Because when we're one with God, we can hear those messages And we get to heed them. Last but not least, let's take a look at this quote. We will not, we do not will things to be done. Things are brought into being not by will, but by the power of the self-assertive truth. When we know our truth, when we know the truth that we are one with God, And God is a part of us. We can speak our word and know that word has power because we are speaking God's worth. And of course, we have to know our truth to get there. We have to be willing to go within and know who and what we truly are. Little godlings. That's what we are, guys. Little godlings. Sprouts of God, children of God, running around out here on this earth in physical form. And when we know that truth, we know the way, that thing that God works through us and as us. So as you contemplate these concepts that God works through us and as us, that it doesn't do things for us, it provides us with the power to do things for ourselves, that it works in our lives as much as we believe that it will. And then if we truly embody, believe in, act as if we are one with God, if we embody that thing, 
then we have power in this world and we can do and accomplish just about anything. So I'm going to wrap this up here. I thank you so much for listening and I thank you so much for your support. And I am indeed knowing fearlessly feral living for me and for you. And fearlessly feral living is a focus ministry of Centers for Spiritual Living. Your support is much appreciated and fully tax deductible. And you can support us in a number of ways. You can support the podcast itself at Buzzsprout. If you listen to the podcast through Buzzsprout, there's a link there that says support the podcast. You can also become a member by going to our Patreon page, and that's Fearlessly Feral on Patreon. You can give us a one-time donation by going to our PayPal page, and that's listed under Karen Lindsley, Nevada. Karen Lindsley, NV, the initials NV. And you can get all of this information and those links by going to our website at fearlesslyferal.org. So once again, I thank you. I honor you. I honor your journey. I love you, and I very much appreciate your support.